like to wander around. All right, we're going to go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, basically, let's, let's read verses 6 through 13 and get started. 6, 6 through 13. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. In, in, the, in these chapters of Romans, it tells us that before we were saved, we were slaves to sin. We were. That old sin nature within us wanted to do wrong. So, well, I never killed anybody, and I, you know, I never raped anybody, and I never robbed a store or nothing, but did you ever have an immortal thought? Well, yeah, but everybody has that. Uh, we're human beings. You know what? A human being, being a human being, might be a reason why we sin, but it is not an excuse. If it was an excuse, then Christ died for nothing. So although we do have the reason that we sin, and, and in Romans we find that we were slaves to sin before we were saved, and because we were humans, that might be the reason, but that was not an excuse because uh, we were talking... Uh, Last night I was talking with someone. You you can look around at the creation and know there's a God. Yeah. You don't get saved from it, but you, anybody in the world can look at the creation, and, and that's what it says. The creation sings his praises and the stars, you know, sing, and on and on. So knowing there's a God isn't enough because my Bible tells me that the devils believe too, and they tremble because they have no Savior. And so although we know why we sin, it's not an excuse for that sin. And Christ had to die for all of us. So we're reading here that the old, uh, our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. We're no longer slaves to it. For he that is dead is freed from sin. I, I have a, a, a sermon that I've preached under the tent quite a few times. I didn't do it this time because I had a new rig and I wasn't hauling a trailer. But I built a casket about, you know, about five and a half feet long. I ran out of wood, or it would have been six foot, but I'm only five, eight, and three quarters. So you could be short. You know, in the old days, they had three sizes of caskets. That's it. They had a little casket for babies. They had another casket for kids. And they had one casket for adults. And if you were too tall for the casket, they'd just bend your knees up. Because, you know, that was covered down, down the lower part of the, That's why the lower part of the body's covered. And, and, and they would just bend your knees up. And so I have that casket... And, and I use it because we, we so many times are preaching to people, you need to resist sin, you need to resist sin, and we do. I mean, I'm not saying we shouldn't preach that, but you know what's better? We need to be dead to sin. Amen. And that's what I use the casket for. Amen, because if you offer a dead man a drink of beer, is he going to take it? Well, no, he can't. He's dead. If you offer him a cigarette, is he going to smoke it? No, he's dead. A pretty woman walks by during the summertime. I'm driving down the road, and there's women that, in the summertime, got less clothes on than, than most women wear for underwear. And I'm driving down the road now. And I had one of my teachers in college teach me this: that if you see something like that, you can't help the first look, but you can sure help the second one. Amen. And you know what I do? Amen. I know this old sinful man. I know him real well. I've been living with him for 66 years. In fact, I've been living with him for 66 years and nine months. Because I was living with him in the tomb. And I know his problems. And if something like that catches my attention, I say, well, Lord, now you did a real good job on that one. I think I'll go home and talk to my wife. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging a beautiful woman. It's when you look upon her to lust out. You committed adultery already in your heart. And so we're not slaves to that. Now, before, we'd have taken the second look and third look and probably followed her around the block. But if you're dead, you can't do that. And so that's why I carry that casket. And now that yeah. sermon was for free. We'll get back to it tonight. Now we're charging nothing for that one. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Too many Christians today believe in eternal security, which I believe in, and it's a biblical doctrine, okay? But the problem is they use it the wrong way. 